All right, I'm just going to start talking. We have to wake out of our slumber. We have to detach our consciousness from this realm. It is heavy upon us. I feel it everywhere and in everything. And this butterfly has been following me this entire time. And I'm only aware of that because I have snapped out of the slave mentality, the overbearing weight of the consciousness they want to instill upon us. And since I'm on the same frequency as this butterfly, I'm able to communicate with it and for it to show me and lead me places that I otherwise wouldn't even care or even bother to notice. And that's why I'm able to get up so close to it as well. We have become friends in a way. The fairy of the, uh, the world that we have left behind. So, we'll see it follow us. Anyways, I was sitting and meditating and depersonalizing with the things around me and changing my vision so that I can absorb the images differently in ways that aren't neatly packaged for my consciousness to assimilate and tell me what each and everything is. Like a, a scientist classifying each and everything and I just allowed it to be what it is. And I saw things and was realizing things that I wouldn't normally do because I have broken out of the character of Joshua. This character is no longer serving me and it's only meant to be a shackle on my true identity. And as I'm sitting there and feeling my body morph and change with the surroundings, I could feel the unbearable weight of this prison realm lock tighter around me, trying to prevent me from expanding into things that I, I am outside of this place. And the attachments I could feel even more strongly. The, the burdens of carrying around these things for your entire life. And I was slowly, but surely, taking these things and placing them aside and allowing me to get lighter and lighter. And each worry or concern that this mortal man is distracted by, I took as another affront, assault to my freedom. So I set those aside as well. And I got more and more detached from this fake place and I was beginning to become a neutral very neutral and I, I look at neutral as new trail it's a new trail of of existing and all of a sudden I felt my uh, my consciousness interrupted by things around me and I get up and lo and behold there is a an agent off in the distance stopped just stopped directly in my line of sight and I felt the presence and it interrupting me and it trying to direct my energy back into uh, a box and I was being severely uh, limited and I, I, I got up and I said okay I'm, I'm gonna actually film this and see if, if they do anything and I got my phone out and I started filming and this person just sat just stayed there for over six more minutes I, I think um, it presented itself as a cyclist 
uh, they were just passing through and they just happened to stop right in my line of energetic sight and s stayed there for an unbelievable amount of time. Like it, a t amount of time that is just not believable for someone to be just there, especially when I'm practicing freeing my consciousness. So I decided to film and see if this person would go away. And they didn't go away. They, they sat there forever. And I felt like it wanted me to stop so that it could, you know, pretend like it's normal. But no, I kept filming and then I, I eventually I got fed up with it and I started to move and walk towards this agent. And then they decided to leave. So with this new consciousness that is emerging, I'm able to connect to things differently and see, let's say messages, are they trickery or are they for my benefit? That's the thing, that's the thing I realize. Or is this all just a wild goose chase? How did this happen? Well, the pains of existence, the weight of a limited existence bears upon me each and every day. I just can't take it. I, I can practice mindfulness, being aware of my thoughts. Well, <laughs> that's the thing. They're not my thoughts. They are artificially placed into my mind for me to agree with and attach to. So yeah, I've been deprogramming that and allowing my true consciousness to emerge from the sea of ignorance. And um, these thoughts, they're meant to get you to do things, to believe things, to act on things against your free will and to keep you in a lower state of frequency to match this place so that you're easily more uh, tameable and, um, just, ow, what's the word? So you're easily more manipulated and corralled into the different pig pens that they have us in. Um, yeah, so I'm just was realizing and knowing that this is all there is for us here. There is no hope of anything inside of this world. And no matter what you put your uh, energy into, it's all just a charade. Come on, it's just a charade. We're just wasting our time here. There is no big goal or, you know, epiphany that you're going to come to and realize it was all worth it to, to stay here as long as you did. What's going to happen is you're going to end up like everyone else. dead, suffering, in a state of absolute despair, because everything that you so hard put your time and energy and love into, all got ripped away from you, like it was nothing. Like a Zen garden where you, you make the prettiest designs and it's all wiped away. Like it never existed and that is our lives here but something higher than this puny mortal state is using us for their enjoyment so for them 
it has a purpose and a meaning. For us, it's just to keep us running around the hamster wheel, distracted, dazed, and confused. Uh, I don't know how anyone can live like this, especially once you wake up. Once you wake up. Once you're waking up. Just nothing feels real anymore. Nothing feels... Everything feels like a piece of poop, as you can see. <sighs> and this life, it tries to suck you back in. And, and you believe it for a little bit. Like, okay, I can, I can do this life thing. I can, you know, make ends meet. I can play this game, get some points, get some comfort. <sighs> do my little dance. Get some enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you realize, oh shit, none of that I actually enjoyed. It's all a ruse, it's all manipulation to uh, feed my body. It's emotional highs. And everything I'm working for is to keep the body alive, basically, and comfortable. To keep the body alive and comfortable. It's like we're our own handlers. We have handlers, but we're also our own handlers. We make sure that um, their product is, is safe. And, and able to be used. Whether we're in good health or bad health, it's the same thing. We're, that's, that's the name of the product. There's different kinds of products. There's you know, good, healthy products that they can suck that energy from. And then there's really miserable, low, just like cancerous in a way, um, debilitating products. And they get, it's just a different product for a different, different being. So no matter how you look at it, whether you're taking great care or poor care, they are getting what they want out of it. Because the inevitable is just around the corner for all of us. Why can't we just throw it all away? Can we just leave it behind? Don't you see that everything that we're holding on to is a trick, a trap, a manipulation to keep us holding on to something we can never have. We're all busy trying to build our little castles here and our little, you know, legacies and working hard and trying hard or doing absolutely nothing. Each one is kind of, in my opinion, the same. Whether you're doing nothing or working super hard, it has the same outcome. But we can <laughs> push ourselves off the, off the cliff into eternity. But if one were to fall off willingly off that cliff into eternity, how many things are keeping you chained to the mountain and not allowing you to fall? And you don't even have to fall, you can rise. But we're all busy. We're all busy. Busy doing nothing, but thinking we're doing something. Uh, how many distractions until you're completely gone? And you want to be gone? Yeah. We all want to be gone. That's why we're busy being gone, focusing on things to keep us, keep our consciousness away from the true reality of, wow, we are in a very, very low 
place where creativity and freedom is stifled at every single turn. And the only freedom uh, we have is choices that they give us, that they make us believe that we have free choice. Oh, I, I have these choices on what to watch today. I have these choices on what to eat today. Oh, I have these choices on where to go today. That's not freedom, those are just choices. I have these choices on what I want to believe or I want to learn or study. <sighs> when will we realize that choices does not equal freedom, does not equal sovereignty? Do we get to make up the choices? Do we actually get to create exactly what we want? Or do we just latch on to the choices that they give us, believing that we <laughs> are free, sovereign, to do whatever the hell we want? No. Bullshit, bullshit. This is just me rambling, 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 because the idea, the idea here is to throw away your mind, to absolutely lose it and become one of those babbling crazy people. Because in the midst of that babbling craziness is pure genius, pure sovereignty. Because you're no longer trying to choose what's acceptable or unacceptable to say. You're just using your sovereignty to create out of nothing. No programs or mind viruses or mental comfort zones, none of that. No, 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 you're, you're, you're sovereign now. You're peeling back the layers of this robotic mind that tells you what to think and how to act. And oh, there's a schedule, you gotta do this and do that, and oh, this old time, 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 you gotta, better go there's time oh what are these people gonna think oh yeah that's another thing i was you know before i was rudely interrupted by that cyclist agent um so we're we don't even have the freedom to record as long as we want to because my phone decided to poop out on me because i have no memory left so i had to go through a bunch of hoops just to delete some stuff see these are just the the things that the slavery that they put on us. They have all of these clouds up in the sky that store all our information, but they can't give us unlimited access to our own creativity without their hoops and barriers and price tags. And you gotta pay for that if you want more access to your own divine natural birthrights. Birthrights. And there's a deer right there because I'm in tune with everything around me. See that deer? Out of nowhere pops up. <laughs> I don't even know why I have these onlookers. There's one right there too. So yeah, so your character person, when it interacts with other characters in this silly little simulation. Uh, these other characters pull your character to the front. You, it pulls your consciousness back into the frequency of you being a human and you having to do human things and human gestures and human, you know, niceties and, um, oh, you have to now become a human again. What if you were just to be untamed, wild? free consciousness and you unleashed the necessities of sovereign sovereignty sovereignty in your own mind people would not look at you the same they would think you're mad you're crazy oh you're so crazy maybe they would say that now to me but this is just a personal journey into madness. My own personal journal. Because I cannot 
stand, even though I'm standing, I cannot stand this reality anymore. I cannot stand to go through another moment of this torture, of this enslavement, and I can watch my mind, their mind that they've given me, and I can see the thoughts and the emotions, they come and go, and I'm not attached. But if I'm being real, my true essence is stifled and stopped from being free. And there's no amount of watching your mind and your thoughts and your emotions that can tame that free spirit within you. Some people are able to tame their spirit and be okay with this. I am not okay with this. And I never will be. And once I have become aware of all of this, it's been a it's been a long progression to get to where I am today. Since my quote unquote awakening experience that happened as a teenager. I'm now 33, oh, 33, this is the year that I'm gonna get crucified and save the world. I would do that. I would definitely die for everyone else to be free. I would do that for all of you and for myself. Because one thing that I, I, I know within my spirit and my heart that I, I can't do is to go off into the wild unknown in this state to infinite freedom knowing there are spirits imprisoned and forced and fed upon. How am I supposed to go into infinite freedom knowing there are others trapped and stuck here? Even if it is of their own doing, that's not a good enough answer for me to let them do that. Because there's a manipulation involved here. There's a trap involved here. And just because they, using their free will, decided to come here through manipulation, which isn't free will, um, then I would become what we all would want is some kind of higher being to come down here and fucking end all of this. End it all. Against our choice of wanting the pleasures of this life. No, we don't want any of this shit. Unless you're born and raised here. Which I was not born and raised here. My body was born here. And they tried to tame and raise me through the different programmings of the mind and the traumas, but I'm untamed, I'm unwild. I mean, I am, I am wild and I will always be that way. And, you know, I feel like I could just keep walking forever and be okay with it, leaving all of this behind and just keep walking. Even though my feet now are getting extremely hot, <laughs> now I'm being punished because I dare walk my own walk away from this madness. And the concrete is super hot. It's telling me that you try, buddy, but the limitations of the flesh will stop you. But I'm not afraid of death. That's just my body. My body is afraid of death, not me. I fight with it every day and I win because I'm more powerful than this body and its urges and desires. And it tries to entrap you back. But what happens if you just let it all go? Let it all go.
I mean, what else is there to say? <laughs> that hour already hasn't been said. Oh, look at this. They're trying to buy my silence. They're offering me the riches of the world if I would just stay. See? Uh, I manifested a dollar. My life is great now. So great. If I can manifest a dollar, I can do anything, right? All the money in the world would not make me want to stay here or do any of this a moment longer. Because you can buy a lot of people's silence. You can buy a lot of people's freedom. You can buy a lot of people's loyalty and honor. And uh, you can buy a lot of people's soul, spirit. Well, spirit. But not me. No. They can coerce me into doing things against my will because I have to in order to bring less suffering to my, my life. But forcing someone to do something is not a changed mind, as they say. It's, it's, um, yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to expand the consciousness of my own being into higher realms because this ain't no place to have your consciousness in this little box between your eyes. They say open up your third eye, your pineal gland. Well, guess what? That's not mine either. No, that's me. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's certain things in life that you can say are good. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm comfortable. I have this and have that. But like I said, you're just lying to yourself. You're just slowly rotting away, believing a lie, believing an illusion. None of this is good. None of this is worthy of an existence here. And as soon as you realize that, you can start detaching. Any false image that you've placed upon yourself that keeps you enslaved needs to be shattered and broken into pieces and blown into the fire so that your true, authentic, sovereign self can be free. And what is, how do you become free in a world that at every turn tries to enslave you, control you, manipulate you, rein you in, and make you be, for lack of a better term, it's bitch. You'll do whatever you, whatever it says, you'll do whatever it wants you to do. And you'll delude yourself into thinking that, huh, it's my free will that I'm doing this. I'm doing this for me. No one else. I think the freest people actually have nothing left to lose at all. Humility, dignity, pride, honor, respect, all those things that you would think would be um, worthy of a life here. And you realize that none of that means anything here. Nothing at all. So why are you allowing other people to dictate that to you? I know they're watching me. I know they're recording me. And I know every little thing here is gaslighting me. They're thinking it's real. Hey. <laughs> You're wasting your time. But I know it goes much deeper than that into my subconscious. And my subconscious still believes all of this. So that's the thing. It's not my subconscious, is it? 
It's your manipulation device. Well, I'm just a shoeless freak in the eyes of this place. But in my eyes, <laughs> I've gained a little bit more sanity because I've shooken off the, uh, the old actor, the old character that Joshua has to be day in and day out. And I've said, hey, you know what? Take this script and shove it. I ain't working here no more. <laughs> I ain't working here no more. So what do you do now that this lady that your shoes are off, you're just walking with no destination in mind? What what now? Well you allow unpredictability and pure creativity and imagination to spark within yourself with no boundaries of if it's possible or impossible. And you just go with it. We have creative abilities and creative powers that um, are each and every day stifled within our own mind by our own beliefs, which are just chains and programs that they've placed upon us. So, um, yeah, work each and every day to unlock that more and more and get your psychic abilities back. It won't ever be the, the full, your full potential in this place, but uh, hey, maybe it can. But what's the point of that? Other than trying to wake people up, which uh, you, if you haven't already known, people aren't going to do anything that they don't want to do. People love the illusion. Even awake people love their illusions. And I say these words for lack of a better term. But yeah. If I could just keep walking and knew I could reach my destination, I just might. What's that destination? Into eternal freedom out of this place. Well, this is, this is just sort of a, a mad rambling. Like I said, it's to unlock my own consciousness into different ways of thinking and being kind of like a wild savage in the woods. He doesn't know how to place his fork on which side of the plate <laughs> because it's silly. All of it is just silly. And that's just how I view this world. All of that's just the customs and the things you got to do, all of it, just a joke. Just a big fat joke. Everyone's laughing at us. They're still down there playing that stupid game of <laughs> giving a shit about anything in that realm for real. Have they not figured it out by now that they're <laughs> they're just in a padded room and it's all an illusion? And they're putting their energy into feeding the system which is trapping them more and more. They, they just won't let go of their little toys down there. Their little egos. Their little selves. The I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to hold on as long as I can. Because I'm afraid of actual freedom. I'm afraid. Well, I, I have to give them, I mean, even me, um, some sympathy because... They've done this to us. They've done this to us. So I don't want to just say like, oh, it's it's all your fault. Because it's not. It's layers and layers and layers of manipulation and trauma. But if you're on this path and you're awake and you're, <laughs> I hate using that word, you're at a wake, which is a funeral, and you won't get out of the fucking casket spiritually 
and get back into life, real life, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You've got to get out of the casket. You have to get into the casket in this life, though, in this physical form, to get out of the casket in real life. It's really fucked up. But where to go from here, I don't know. I just really feel like throwing everything away and just finding a finding a portal and going through it and be done with it. And going through that portal could be many different things, if you know what I mean. Because all this is a joke. All of it. Shoes are still off. Oh, well. What else is there to say? Nothing can bring me fulfillment or joy in this life. I mean, you can find them in, you know, people and things like that. But I'm saying, it will never be enough. It's never enough. Nothing here is ever enough because trading your eternal freedom for any limited pleasure here is not going to be enough for you. You're always going to be seeking and searching and trying to find that which you lost, which is either taken away or stolen. You will forever wander this wasteland trying to fill up on stupid little pleasures, stupid little comforts. And you'll always be hungry. But where we come from, we are never hungry. We are never lacking. And some people may say, oh, that sounds boring. No, it's not boring. You don't know the fullness of what those words mean until you're out of this place. This isn't a challenge. This is a freaking massacre of consciousness of yourself and the weight of eternity. The weight of eternity needs to be pressed upon this place until it is powder and then blown into the infernos so that no one can ever experience this again. Even if they wanted to, there's no possible way that they could. All life is freed because there is nowhere else to go besides free and whoever is responsible for this place they can go along with the with the ash because they are not wanted or needed anywhere besides the trash pit the inferno that will burn and burn <laughs> and not some kind of hell the bible talks about just get rid forever the energy and consciousness that would think all of this is okay so that we would never have to experience anything like this again well the weight of eternity is on our side no matter how long it takes for us to get out of here the weight of eternity is pressing this realm more and more until it pops like a bubble Perhaps that bubble will squirt all of us, blow all of us into eternal freedom. Those who want to stay, well, they'll get sucked out because there is no other option. Either you exist in freedom or you don't exist at all. <sighs>